three, number three, from page three twenty, maybe. There we go. All right, page three twenty, number three. So, here's the equation, Na2CO3 plus calcium hydroxide goes to make 2 sodium hydroxides and calcium carbonate. The question says, determine the two decimal places, the molar masses of all substances involved, and write the molar masses as a conversion factor. So here's what you're going to do. And we're only going to do this for one. You can do the rest on your own here. Is, let's go with red. So we're going to take the first one, sodium carbonate. We got sodiums, we got carbons, and we got oxygens. Now you're going to need your periodic table, which is on your table there. How many sodiums do we have? Two. On your periodic table, to two decimal places, what's its molar mass? Okay, guys. What's its molar mass to two decimal places? 22.99 or 98? 99. What? Here you go. They keep getting moved around, I'm not sure. How many carbons to two places? What does it weigh? 12.01, .01. and our units are always grams per mole, and that's going to help us in a minute here. How many oxygens? Three at two places. 15.99. Now, somebody, or more than some one of you, take out your calculators and tell me what two times 22.99 is. 45.98 grams per mole. Next one's easy. And then somebody tell me what 15.99 times 3 is. 15.99 times 3. What do you got? 47.97 grams per mole. We add these up. So we got 15, 16, 19, 105. That sound right? 105.96? Yes, no, maybe. All right. Now it says write it as a conversion factor. Now, we're going to be going two different ways today, maybe, is this can, this can be written as 105.96 grams of sodium carbonate per one mole of sodium carbonate. Or, what can I can I do something different with that as a conversion factor? Or I can say in one mole of sodium carbonate, there are how many grams? One hundred and five point nine six grams of sodium carbonate. Now, here's the deal. I wrote the number, I wrote the units, and I wrote the substance. 
This you have to do. It will help keep you straight when you're doing your problems. The reason you have two conversion factors up there. One takes you from gram or takes you from moles to grams. The other one takes you from grams to moles, and you'll see that in a second what I mean by that. All right. So you have to do that for each of the substances. So you'll have to do it for the calcium hydroxide, the sodium hydroxide, and the calcium carbonate. But key thing here, you're only figuring out the molar mass for NaOH. Don't worry about the two. All right? They want the molar mass just for the substance. The two won't apply to it. So for NaOH, you have one in sodium, one oxygen, and one hydrogen. Don't worry about the two for this purposes. After class, I will post the key for last night's homework. All right. So today, we're going to do a mass to mole calculation. And I want to go through it carefully, and we'll do a couple of them. And then we'll move on. We're going to have a lab tomorrow. It's a two-day lab. Tomorrow is the longer part because you got to get used to what you're doing. Friday's part goes faster because it's just kind of a repeat of tomorrow. So what we're going to do, and first hour said you can't really see the equation very well. All right. The equation for this problem is up there on the board. It says the first step in the industrial manufacture of nitric acid is the catalytic oxidation of ammonia, which is here. Whoa, what happened? Whoa. I don't know, I touched it. Is ammonia to, you add oxygen to ammonia, you get nitrogen monoxide and water coming off. All right? So, we, what's the first thing we have to do? We have to balance the equation. So, I'm going to go do that up on the, well, I'll do it here. No, I'm going to hit pause and do it up. All right, so, let's put in our numbers. We got four, five, four, six. Now, what do we know? What do we know from the problem? What do we know? We have 824 grams of ammonia. Write it out. Number, units, substance. What are we looking for? What are we looking for? Moles of NO. Now, that's a key thing. When it says how many, that's what we're looking for. Seems odd or obvious, but not to a lot of people. So, first thing we're going to do, I'm going to go down into the white here. We're going to write down what we know, just like any math problem. And when we're doing a mass to mole, we're going to have two conversion factors in order to get over to moles of NO. All right. Now, what's our swinging door? What ratio? Mole to mole, because I want to get to moles of NO from moles of what? NH3. 
We're kind of approaching this a little backwards. I'm trying something different with you guys. What do I want to get rid of over here? What, do I, what unit do I want to get rid of? Grams. So to get rid of grams, I'm going to put them on the bottom. And I'm going to put moles of NH3 up here. And so let's look at this. I want to get rid of grams and get to moles because I got to get to the the swinging door and the swinging door is a mole to mole ratio so I got to get to moles first from grams I got to get to moles what has the units grams per mole molar mass or atomic mass what is what does one mole of NH3 weigh round it off 17. Now, from our balanced chemical equation that we wrote and balanced. You wrote it first, then you balanced it. <laughs> All right. What is the ratio, young Kennedy? What? The ratio of NO to NH3. Four to four. Can we simplify that? So wherever you can simplify, do that. It'll make your life easier. All right. Can we cancel any units here? Um, moles. <laughs> moles of what? NH3. So we'll cross them out. And the grams of NH3. Does somebody want to take 824 and divide it by 17? What do you got? 48.47. There we go. This is a correct answer. Number, unit, substance. All right. Do not forget to do this when you're writing these out. We'll do another example here. <laughs> Trying to find one in the... Okay. Guys and girls, this is coming from future homework that I have not yet assigned, but it will get assigned. So you might want to write this example down. It's going to be on page 321, number 15. And the, the book says that copper reacts with silver nitrate to produce copper 2 nitrate and you guys all know how to do these right and silver so there's our first The first thing we did, wrote it down. You got it right. Still. Okay, I won't trick you anymore. Um, Most everybody did really well today. So, let's pick on Hannah now. Is it balanced? How can we fix it? Well, we what do we got over here? How many? And we and then and a two in front over here, and we're good to go. Okay, the problem says if we have and let's write down what we know. 
If we have 2.25 grams of silver produced, how many moles of copper to nitrate are produced? So, I'm going to scroll up here. I'm going to switch to yellow because it shows up better on the black. So, the first thing we're going to do is write down 2.25 grams of silver. And since this is mold of mass, and I have two conversion factors so we can get to moles of copper to nitrate. All right. So the first thing we want to get rid of grams of silver and get to moles of silver. And what is this conversion factor? Where does it come from? Molar mass. What's silver weigh? 107 point what? Uh, let's call it 108, just to make our life easy. All right. We'll call it 108. So that helps us get rid of grams of silver. Now we want to get rid of the moles of silver because we want to end up with moles of copper to <coughs> nitrate. What's our ratio of copper to nitrate to silver? One to two. Now we can cancel out moles of silver now, here it gets really weird here. You multiply by the tops, divide by the bottom. So you're going to take 2.25 times 1 times 1, divided by 108, divided by 2. It's going to be a really small number. Somebody do it. What'd you get? 0 0.01 moles of copper to nitrate. Remember, multiply by the tops, divide by the bottoms. Just like you do in, in fractions. So that was number 15 from page 321, which will eventually get signed to you. Look for a remind this afternoon. Now, let's go to mass to mass. And we're going to do one of these calculations. We'll do more on Friday. And I'm going to try to put out a summary video on all of these. But mass to mass. So we're going all the way. Now this one I made a little difficult. That's why we're only going to do one. Okay, it says, mass to mass example, tin 2 fluoride is used in some toothpaste. It is made by the reaction of tin with hydrogen fluoride. What is the symbol for tin? What is its charge? Plus 2. 
because the Roman yeah, ten can be plus two or mi plus four. So, what's charge on fluoride? So, very. So we need two fluorines, right? So we're gonna have S N F two. Well, wait a minute. I'm going backwards here. Sorry. They said it's made by the reaction of tin plus hydrogen fluoride. So we make SNF2 plus what's left over? H, but how do we write it? H2. Now, we've written the equation. Now we have to balance the equation. You guys are going to remember it though, aren't you? <laughs> so, it should be simple. Two in front of the HF and we're done. What do we know, children? Thirty grams of HF. What don't we know? Grams of SNF2. Alrighty. Here we go. We're putting it all together now. We started with mole ratio, mole to mole. Then we did mole to mass. Then we did mass to mole. We're going to stick them all together now. And where they overlap is the mole to mole calculation. So, And I promise I will get you a nice video up to go through this one more time. So we're going to write down what we know. Now, we are going to have three conversion factors this time. And they overlap at the mole mat, mole ratio. All right. They overlap at the mole ratio. So, what are we trying to get rid of in our first conversion factor? Grams of HF. So, what goes on top of HF? And that always gets a 1. Somebody look real quick and add up HF. So 20. Now we want to get rid of moles of HF because we're going through the door. We want to get to the other side of the equation. Ratio of SNF2 to HF. 1 to 2 from the balanced equation. Now we want to get to grams of SNF2 from what? Moles of SNF2. That gets a 1. SNF2, we got 19 plus 19 is 38 plus what's 10 way? So somebody put it all together for me. I don't have it. 157, is that right? <laughs> okay, let's call it 157. Can we cancel stuff out? Grams, grams, moles, 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 moles. 30 times 157 divided by 20 divided by 2. You could simplify this down even if you really wanted to. Well, that's what I'm saying. Let's look here. Let me pick a new color here. So, if I simplify this, I can get rid of this. I can take this down. 
How many fives in 15? How many fives in 20? So now you got 3 times 157 divided by 4. I just simplified the fractional part of this. So 3 times 157 is going to be about... No, 3 times 157. And then divided by 4. Now let's let's look here. So three times one fifty seven is four seventy one divided by four one seventeen point seven five. Alrighty. Now, the next thing for today is to get ready for the lab tomorrow. All right. And you can do this in the next 20 minutes or you can do it at home tonight, but I would suggest you do it now. Go to Google Classroom and pull up this, this um, Michigan stoichiometry experiment. Pull this up. Everybody open it. Everybody open it. So, you need to convert each of the following word equations to balanced chemical equations. Enter each equation in the space below the word equation. Use command, comma, to get a subscript. To turn on scrub, subscript, you go command, comma. To turn it off, you hit command, comma again, and it'll make it go, the cursor go back up. So, what you have to know here, and let me get you started. <coughs> What's the chart? What is the symbol for potassium? K. What's the charge on potassium? What is carbonate? CO3. What's the charge? Minus 2. Reacts with, that's a plus sign. Everybody knows hydrochloric acid, correct? HCl to form gets an arrow and potassium chloride KCl and carbon dioxide and water. If you don't know carbon dioxide and water, got a long road this semester. So you want to put those in to the into the as nice, neat, typed up little things. So, 